I've always been fairly tall. Like salt and light, Pastor. I'll get there. I've always been fairly tall. Uh, all through elementary school, I was the tallest in my class until sixth grade when a couple of the girls shot past me in the way that teenage girls can. Then by 10th grade, I was about six foot two. And then I slowed down, edged up another two thirds of an inch maybe by the time I was 18. And that's where I plateaued, about six foot two and three quarters. I, of course, rounded up would say I was 6'3". And then my buddy Scott shot past me with a growth spurt and when we graduated. He was the tallest in our class at 6'4". But I was fairly tall, especially in that little farm town. My grandpa Kiefer was a tall man for his generation. Um, he was 6'2". And he hated to see his taller children or grandchildren slouching. My mother, two of her sisters were fairly tall and they let us know, oh yeah, grandpa does not like to see you slouch. My siblings, several of my cousins were also tall. And in our teenage years, when kids can sometimes slouch for lots of reasons, you know, with their shoulders slumped and their heads sort of dragging a little bit, saggy necks. Grandpa had a way of letting us know that he didn't approve of our poor posture. Take note, Ben. He would come up behind us with a protruding knuckle. And he'd give us a poke on our spine, right between our shoulder blades those stooping, slouchy shoulder blades, and he'd give us a poke, and he'd say, straighten up. God made you tall, be tall. And boy, we straightened up. And as indelicate as that method of his was, it worked. I'll tell you what, Grandpa Kiefer's kids and grandkids didn't slouch certainly not in his presence. We had good posture, and I'd say, you know, most of us still do. Now these days, many of you can relate, I find that I'm increasingly susceptible to gravity. And I will catch a glimpse of myself in a storefront window sometimes, and I realize, oh, I've become a little stooped. And I remember that knuckle poke, and I really make an effort pull my shoulders back, to straighten my spine, lift my chin. And I remember Grandpa saying, God made you tall. Be tall. Boy, I'm really setting myself up now. Keep that good posture, Pastor Lane. Now, to be clear, I know that being tall in and of itself is no particular virtue. Right? Good posture is recommended by doctors. It's just good for us to keep good posture. But here's the thing. There is something about intentionally trying to be who God made you to be that is virtuous. Indeed, is a spiritual discipline if you commit yourself to it. Remembering who God made you to be and doing what you need to do to stay true to that. And the image of standing up straight isn't just limited to our physical posture. We use that terminology for all sorts of things in our lives. And we know that we can slouch our way through life in many ways if we're not careful. Right? We can forget to do that extra work that it takes to remain upright in character for example, that extra work that it takes to remain undeviating in our good nature, to remain true to our core values and our core principles. And if we don't do that work, we can allow the world to wear us down, and to drag us down, 
to soften and dilute those core values in such a way that it makes us hard, makes it hard for us to remember. No, I'm meant to stand up. I'm meant to stand up straight. I am meant to stand with my head held high, standing tall ethically, morally tall, humanely tall, spiritually tall, good-naturedly tall, compassionately tall. We are meant to stand head and shoulders, if you will, above those who are stooped and drooped and slumped and slackened all around us, who have somehow forgotten who they were meant to be as well. So in his Sermon on the Mount, portion of which we heard here today, Jesus certainly doesn't use a knuckle in anybody's spine, but he does say, straighten up. Straighten up. Be the people that God made you to be. Jesus tells us, tells us, we are meant to be salt and light. And I want you to remember, he doesn't say, you could be salt and light. He doesn't say, you might be salt and light. He doesn't say, you should be salt and light. He says, you are salt and light. When we are true to our God-given natures, when we are who we are supposed to be, we are salt and light for the rest of the world. We're meant to enhance the flavor of life, if you will, by everybody uh, around us. We're meant to provide clarifying and illuminating guidance and brightness out in a world that is often full of darkness and confusion. The crowd on that hillside that day were ordinary folks. They were not the leading intelligentsia of their day. Right? They were not the well-connected elite. They were not the power brokers. They were not celebrity icons. Jesus said, you, you folk, are salt and light to the world. He says to us today, you are salt to the earth. You are a light to the world. So your salt, be salty. Be zesty, be flavorful, add some zing to the recipe of life around you. You're the light of the world, so glow warmly, beam brightly, shine dazzlingly, illuminate the area around you, reveal, flood the world with the light of God that dwells inside you. We use these words, folks. The light of God dwells within you, and it's meant to shine. Jesus doesn't throw any qualifiers in there when he says who we're meant to be. He doesn't say, some of you are salt and light. He doesn't qualify it. He says to his disciples and everyone who can hear him, everybody in earshot, he says, you are salt and light. And in that, there's an individual call to be salt and light and a collective call to be salt and light. And I'm going to dare it here. It's appropriate to say, y'all are salt and light. Not only that, all y'all are salt and light. Did I do that right? I'll get there. I should have worn my boots. All 
y'all, y'all are salt and light. Nobody's accepted. That's who we're meant to be. I want you to take a look around. Look, look backwards, look sideways. Place yourself in the midst of this community this morning, all right? And I want you to take ownership of this as individuals and as community, all right? You are the salt of the earth, Dallas. Kathleen, you are the light to the world. Russell, salt of the earth. Michael, you're light to the world. I could go around, but Ben, I mean it. You are meant to be salt and light to the world. People are supposed to look to you for guidance. You're a gifted young man. Use them. Use them well. You're sharing them with us. Thank you for that. But some of us are like, yeah, well, I, I was that. Now, no, you still are meant to be. Right? We may not have the zip in our step we used to have, but we're still supposed to summon some zip, huh? some zest, some spice, some relish, some tang. We should give a certain gusto to the world around us, right? We're meant to brighten the world. We're meant to enhance the world, to give guidance and clarity, warmth, discernment of where danger lies, right? That's all in that mantle of being light for the world. So Central Christian Church of Austin, you are the salt of the earth. We are a light to the world. So if I can quote my grandpa Kiefer, straighten up, don't slouch. Stop slouching. God made you to be spicy. God made you to be brilliant, dazzling. God made you to stand out from the crowd. God made you to be seen from afar. God made us to shine. We can put on too much humility and forget not me, but I've got the light of God burning in my heart. We're supposed to shine, not in a way that makes anyone else feel less dazzling in their lives, right? But in a way that invites their own God light to be discovered within them and encouraged and revealed, and then it passes in waves. Right? Do you believe it? Well, say it with me. Say it. Say, I am the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. Then say, I am the light to the world. Say it on behalf of the church. We are the light of the world. Ah, now you're going to make me take my knuckle out. You're slouching a little bit. Stand up straight. God made you tall. Be tall. Say it again. We are the light of the world. Yeah. See, we've, we've kind of forgotten that about ourselves not just us, a brand of Christianity, right? There's a, there's a brand of Christianity that we place ourselves in or that we fall in, and we've gotten a little too quiet. We've gotten too meek, if you will. We're slouching. We're letting other expressions of Christianity proclaim boldly and you know, what light looks like to them. And we 
are letting a hamper cover our light. Your pastor hears himself say that. We are doing that. So let's stand up straight. Ben. Yeah. God made us tall. God made us bright. God made us salty. We're not supposed to blend in. We're not supposed to lay low. We're not supposed to be deluded and dragged down by earthly values and norms. We're not meant to become hampered and diminished by that haze of confusion and fear that grips so much of the world. We're to rise above all that. We are to be rooted in our polar star, Jesus Christ. And then we don't need to be worried that we're bragging about ourselves like, no, I am simply trying to reflect a light that has been planted in me. Right. We're supposed to radiate those qualities far and wide, unashamedly, unabashedly, unreservedly, unapologetically. So let's take that hamper off of our head. Get up on the table and shine, right? Climb up to that high place and shine. We sit at the top of a hill. It's a modest hill by California standards, but it's a sizable hill by Texas standards, downtown Austin standards. We're on a hill. They planted that capital there for a reason, and we're right next to it. We're on a promontory. People should look to us geographically. And we better be shining when they look, right? We better have a little tang to our expression. You are flavorful in your own way. You are salty in your own way, and we are salty in our own way when we gather together. Don't take on, let us not take on, the drab flavor of earthly mush that's all around us. All right. Jesus also didn't qualify this reminder of his by saying, sometimes. Right? Anybody find that in the scripture? Mm, sometimes. No. He didn't say, some of you are salt and light. And he also didn't say, you are salt and light sometimes. It's not when you feel up to it. It's not on your best day. It's not when you've gotten your act together. Right? You are salt and light, not just when your self-image is really high. So I want to remind you, on your worst days, on your darkest days, on your blandest and drabbest and most blah of blah days, Jesus still says to you, you are salt. You are light. Get up and get out there and shine. Take what you've got, put it into play. It'll be good enough if Christ is with you. Don't wait until you feel zesty and brilliant. Get out there and be zesty and be brilliant and see if the feeling doesn't catch up with you. Okay. It's in there. Just trust it. It's in there. Trust Jesus when he says, it's who you are. Get out in the world and spice it up and shine all over it. God made you salty. Get out there and be salty. 
God made you to be a light. Stand up, put your shoulders back, straighten that neck of yours, and shine. Because it can be a dark world out there, and people need us to shine. Amen? Amen.